you know something? I was in the barbershop uh, the other day, and guess what was on TV? An NFL preseason football game. We want to watch. <laughs> you know, just like Des Bryant said, I'm not concerned about what's on the outside. I got a family to feed. Black people, you know, collectively, we're not concerned about the politics of the world. We're not concerned about the things that actually matter. I want to watch my football. I want to escape the realities of my everyday life and just watch football and enjoy what I want to watch. Right. And that's prominent. Collectively, that's what we like to do historically. We just like to escape and, and watch what we want to watch, do what we want to do, regardless of the outside world, regardless of what's happening. And it's pretty prominent that, you know, with Colin Kaepernick not playing in the NFL and it looks like he will never, ever play a game again. It's solidified, you know, and it's, it's been solidified that the, the NFL is an oppressive white supremacist business, um, you know, that continues to make billions of dollars off the, the backs of black folk. 75% of the players are classified as black or African-American. These are the players that hold the most power. Collectively, if they sit out, <laughs> they can cripple the NFL. But these Negroes are too scared their their mental illnesses, their mental disorders are way too far out there for them to conceive the notion of disobeying their slave master billionaire owners that they play for. You know? And I believe, I really believe that the owners are sending a message to, you know, their staff, the front office the coaching staff and the players, they're sending a message. Listen, you don't respect the flag. You uh, protest, et cetera, et cetera. You're out of there. You're not getting paid. You're going to get cut and you're going to be replaced. Right. And I think I believe they're doing that. I mean, you've seen these coons coming out left and right and left and right and left and right. You know, you had the coach Hugh Jackson talking about he doesn't want his players, you know, being the focus of protesting. He doesn't want his players to flat out protest. Right. And I saw I saw the uh, the clip that, that Shannon Sharp did on, on on Fox Sports Undisputed. He ripped that dude to shreds. He basically called Hugh Jackson the coon on, li on live television without saying the word coon. And people ask me, you know, and I've explained this, you know, a lot, but people always ask me when I use the a phrase coon code, what is the coon code? Well, again, like I keep saying to you guys, you know, black people, they say that black people, we don't follow a code. Right. When I say they, I mean, you know, either people who are woke, the conscious community, pro blacks, et cetera. They say we need to follow a code. You're not on code, brother. You're not on code. That kind of thing, right? And I say, well, yeah, black people do follow a code. The coons follow a code. It's called the coon code. They follow that. And you see that coming out left and right with these NFL players, coaches, and retired players, et cetera, et cetera, coming out. And just basically selling it their soul for the NFL, saying that don't, you know, don't be distracted by the outside world. You know, Tim Brown, that came out and said some real egregious shit. <laughs> you know, he says that uh, don't don't ruin this opportunity in a positive situation. Right. You know, this this real. Derogatory, inflammatory statements regarding your stance on black society and injustices that is affecting everyone including yourself 
You're playing in a league owned and controlled by the dominant white society. Right? You're there as a player. You're a commodity. And so these NFL players who suffer from these mental disorders, such as Stockholm Syndrome, Cognitive Dissonance, Post-Traumatic Slavery Disorder, PTSD, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> these players that come out and suffer from these mental disorders, they say things like this and they think it's normal. They don't understand the history of how they got in this position. Right. You know, during the Jim Crow era. Where black people sacrifice their ways of equality so they can actually integrate with their oppressors. This is where we're at today. This is why I always talk about epigenetics being one of the root causes of how our psychological thinking is being done and being used today. Your surroundings, how you grew up, living in impoverished conditions, and these impoverished conditions weren't, you know, they didn't happen overnight. They were created by those people who oppress us, the dominant white society. And it goes on both ways. If you live in, if you live in an affluent community, you're still influenced by those very same people who oppress you. Your thought process your surroundings all come into play. You know, single parent household. Black children are being more black children are being born out of wedlock, you know, or the 70 percent, et cetera, et cetera. Things I've already I've already talked about. But <clears throat> like I said, you got guys like this, Tim Brown, Hugh Jackson, Des Bryant. <laughs> LaDainian Thompson talking about I am mixed. Go check out that video I did. Uh, it's just the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Players like that are the reasons why the NFL boycott is failing. And it's going to continue to happen because more players are going to speak out against what Colin Kaepernick is doing. Cause you know why they can't afford to not get paid. It's all about money. It's all about the bottom dollar. That's Brian got a family to feed. He don't care about the outside world. Quote, whatever they going on with that, that's them. I don't really have nothing to say about that. That's what the majority of NFL players think. These guys are gladiators, like our brother Neely Fuller would say. Gladiators in the Coliseum being watched by the dominant white society. That's what we are. Gladiators in a sport, in a Roman Coliseum. Being used. While the NFL owners continue to make money hand over fist. Right. You got you got guys like Jay Cutler coming in, retired, out of shape. <laughs> Admitted to saying, yeah, man, I, I'm an NFL quarterback. I ain't got to be in great shape. You imagine you imagine somebody like Cam Newton saying, hey, man, I'm not I'm not in real good shape, but I'm gonna come in here and, and you know, help my team win. You, you know how he can be crucified. Just just using him as an example. Cam Newton would be crucified by the mainstream media. White supremacy runs rampant. This is the system that we live in today. We live in a system of racism, white supremacy. We live in a system that number 45, Donald Trump, continues to support white supremacists. He is the alt-right leader. He is the neo-Nazi leader. He is the white supremacist leader. This is what we live in today. This is what we're dealing with. And like I said before in my other video about the most effective way to boycott the NFL is going to take sponsors. You know, the sponsors that we have here that the NFL supports, 
black people, we rely on these sponsors. So are we going to go cold turkey on every single sponsor that's listed here? I highly doubt that. We're too dependent on their resources. We're not independent enough. We don't have our own infrastructure amongst anything. And it takes a long time to build an infrastructure or a parallel economy in comparison to the dominant white society. I'm, I'm a big, huge advocate on just having our own resources, having a parallel economy. Equivalent or better than the dominant white society. But in order for you to not depend on this resource, you need a replacement. And majority of this list, we don't have replacements of our own. We don't have a black owned Verizon, a black owned Visa, a black owned Procter and Gamble, a black owned Pepsi. We don't have any of that stuff. So how can we boycott these sponsors if we don't have a replacement? Right. So. Uh, family, you know, in, in my opinion, we, we, we're, we're in a lose lose situation. We just have to continue, in my opinion, just continue to focus on replacing this broken system of injustice with a system of justice with or without the NFL players. With or without the sponsors, focus on building our own economy, focus on building our own parallel economy, rather. And it's going to take a long time. This is a long term project for us, in, in my opinion. Right. So, I mean. Like I said, more players are going to come out and speak. Um, and again, you, you guys, uh, you got guys like Hugh Jackson and, and Des Bryant and so many others, Chad Ochocinco, so many others just, just showing their coon code author ways, defending or using white supremacist talking points, right? That's what they're doing. So more and more players are going to come out and just speak ridiculous shit about Colin Kaepernick. They just show how ignorant they are. Right. So don't be surprised by that. Don't be surprised. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that family. Um, the ones that are woke, the ones that understand what's going on, just work with them. Just work with them. All right. And as far as the players and the and sponsorships, again, collectively as a group, black people, we just don't understand how to attack the system effectively in order for them to understand that a black player like Colin Kaepernick is the most valuable asset that doesn't have a job in the NFL because he was raising awareness about black societal issues pertaining to injustices. Right? That's all he was doing. And he's banned for life from the NFL. So he's not going to get a job. And. Again. The sponsors. The players. That are part of the NFL. They're, they're going to continue to do what they do. They're going to they're gonna continue to support the system. That's it. So there's really, there's really nothing you can do about that. So, like I said, you go in the outside world, 
black people are still going to watch the NFL collectively. That's what they're going to do. It's just up to us to focus on the people who are already woke and know what's going on. Let's focus on building our own parallel economy. Let's establish that. Let's have our own NFL league, black owned, right? Let's just completely just separate, like I always say, separate from our oppressors and from our very own people that make us look bad. Let's just start from scratch. Like we did in the Jim Crow era. You know, that, that that's it. That's that's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my opinion. So like I said, this NFL boycott is 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 a failure. Because these players they only know one thing. And that's getting that paycheck from their slave owners. And that's following the coon code. That's it. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that family. Leave your comments down below about this. Let me know what you guys think. All right, family. Until next time, Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.